China on Thursday urged the United States to cancel a massive arms deal to Taiwan, warning of severe consequences if it does not heed the call. The U.S. Defense Department announced the contract late on Wednesday, allowing U.S. company Lockheed Martin Corp. to sell an unspecified number of Patriot air defense missiles to the island. Defense analysts say the hardware, some of the best in its class, could shoot down the Chinese mainland's short-range and mid-range missiles. The sale rounds out a broad $6.5 billion arms package approved under former U.S. President George W. Bush in late 2008. The deal is currently pending notification to the U.S. Congress. The foreign ministry yesterday urged the U.S. to clearly recognize the severe consequences of arms sales to Taiwan. China says it will give a $7 million grant to help fund infrastructure development projects in Kenya. The announcement came at the start of the Chinese Foreign Minister Yang Jie Chi's latest Africa tour. His schedule includes visits to Nigeria, Sierra Leone, Algeria, Morocco, and Saudi Arabia. Kenyan President Maui Kibaki said China has offered to help develop a second port at Lamu, which will be connected to Ethiopia, southern Sudan, and Rwanda. Analysts say this would provide a route to export Chinese oil from southern Sudan. China will also help upgrade a railroad linking Kenya's Mombasa port and the Ugandan capital. In November, China's government promised to offer Africa $10 billion in concessional loans over the next three years. Seven gang members were executed in the northern province of Hebei on Thursday for murder, gun sales, gambling and other crimes in what state media called the province's worst gang case since the founding of the People's Republic 60 years ago. The seven gang leaders were executed in Hebei's capital, Shijiazhuang. The executions are the latest development in a sweeping crackdown on organized crime in China. Two gang bosses in the southern province of Guangdong were sentenced to death last month. A former gang leader who was the son of a high-ranking politician was executed in November in the northern province of Jilin. Also in November, a mob boss in the southern metropolis, Chongqing, was executed as part of a massive crackdown that netted up to 2,900 suspects, including 14 high-ranking government and police officials. Taiwanese universities are preparing to attract top-notch students from mainland China, setting the stage for the dismantling of another barrier amid warming ties between the sides. Despite a decade of cultural exchanges, Taiwan has barred Chinese students from studying for college degrees on the island, fearing that mainland students could bring unwelcome political influences or compete for jobs with locals. Now, Vice Education Minister Lin Chung Ming has announced that students from 40 leading Chinese universities can apply to study on the island if the legislature approves the change as is expected. The initiative is part of Taiwan's leader Ma Ying Zhou's signature program to improve relations between the island and the mainland. Since taking office 19 months ago, Ma has lowered tensions across the 100-mile-wide Taiwan Strait to their lowest level since the sites split amid civil war in 1949. And staying with Taiwan, the island, a major producer of microchips and other electronics, says exports had hit the highest growth rate in nearly 20 years in December due to recovering global demand. Shipments from the island last month totaled more than $20 billion, a rise of nearly 50% from a year earlier. The finance ministry said the figures marked the highest growth rate since 1991. December's export data represented a 14-month high and a 0.1% rise from November. But analysts said they were worried whether the momentum could last through 2010 amid fears of overbooking by clients from abroad. Imports to Taiwan last month also hit a 15-month high of more than $18 billion, a rise of over 55% year-on-year. More than 100,000 officials from across China were penalized for disciplinary violations between January and November last year, according to state media. The government-controlled Xinhua News Agency says that group includes Communist Party members, government workers, and leaders of state-owned enterprises. Many of their offenses involved bribery or embezzlement. The government says its discipline inspection bodies received more than a million petitions and tip-offs from the public relating to alleged wrongdoings by officials in the 11 months. Meanwhile, party and government officials in the southern province of Guangdong will soon have to report the employment of their spouses and children if they want to keep their jobs. 
That's according to draft regulations aimed at clamping down on official corruption drawn up by Guangdong's provincial committee. Committee member Hu Zhejun said the move would promote honesty among party and government officials and help clean up corruption. The draft regulation also stipulates that top party and government officials are not allowed to directly supervise human resources, financial affairs and related important sectors in their departments, organizations, cities and counties. The China Daily says the new law will make Guangdong the first province to restrict the power of its party and government officials at all levels. A 14-month-old boy is recovering after doctors removed a chopstick from his brain that accidentally poked up through his nose. That's according to a spokesman from the Beijing hospital where a toddler Li Qingqiao is being treated. The boy from the eastern province of Shantung is undergoing treatment for an infection caused by the life-threatening impalement. Lee was playing with chopsticks while his mother was in the kitchen washing dishes when he fell and began crying when a chopstick pierced into his nose. Neurosurgeons at the Beijing hospital where he was taken were concerned. The removal of the chopstick, which was lodged 0.16 inches into this brain, would cause internal hemorrhaging once removed, possibly causing paralysis or even death. Fortunately, the doctors say the removal resulted in little bleeding and only a mild infection. And that's the BOM headlines for now, but we'll be back with more news after this.